All right, let's move on. 50-year-old white male presents with right-sided flank pain, no urologic symptoms, excellent performance status, CT chest, MRI of the brain and bone scan are negative, and a biopsy of this primary tumor here reveals it to be clear cell renal cell carcinoma. What are your thoughts? Uh, Dr. Chapin. Do we have any other imaging workup, or is this? Nope, that's it. So you got a locally advanced tumor clearly involving the renal sinus and collecting system of the left kidney extending very centrally. Yeah. No evidence of any metastatic disease. So I think in this, in this setting um, here, we, we try to go to a clinical trial first if one's available. Um, in the absence of a clinical trial, I would offer this patient a left uh, laparoscopic nephrectomy. And um, based on your imaging, I mean, you're telling me it's, it's invasive of the renal science there in a single image. Taking you your word is. for it for T3 disease, uh, I, would, I, would, I would do a, uh, a lymph node dissection with my nephrectomy. So laparoscopic radical nephrectomy with a lymph node dissection. Yes. Dr. Karam, your thoughts? Uh, I think that's a reasonable option, but like Dr. Chapin asked for more images just to make sure uh, how resectable the tumor is. I mean, another option would be to do a partial nephrectomy, especially if the patient does not have good kidney function, which uh, just another consideration. And sometimes I tell the patient we will try to do a partial nephrectomy, but there is a high risk of ending up with a radical nephrectomy. Uh, but the only downside to that, or the main downside, is that we will have to do it open, or I would do an open partial if I can, uh, converting it to a radical uh, through the open incision if I cannot achieve uh, good margins. Dr. Delacroix? Uh, I would offer this patient an open attempted left partial. Uh, again, uh, what do you I, think the odds of success are? I don't have all the images here. Uh, you stop whining. You guys are whining. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> Pro probably, I'd tell them 40, 50 percent chance I'm going to have to take out the kidney. Uh, the tumor goes extent, almost to the other side of the yeah, sinus. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but I look at this image down here. I, you, really, this is one where you need more images. Uh, but I, if, if I look at the images and I think it's, if I have a 50 percent chance that I can do a partial nephrectomy, that would be what I did. This picture almost begs the question if this is the same tumor or not. It looks so nicely encapsulated on the, yeah. on the right side. Yeah. and. It just looks much different on the uh, left side of it's the image. A, it's a lobulated tumor that extends centrally, yeah. and the, the, this I'll, cut over here is lower. I would have chosen some better pictures. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so can I ask Chris? Yeah. Why you, You're presenting all these patients who have pain that doesn't really, uh, is not explained by their tumors. Right-sided flank pain, here is the tumor on the left. The other several patients had abdominal pain or left flank pain and the tumor is on the right. What's going on here? I mean, it's, it, it's a very common, common presentation. They present with symptoms that are completely unrelated to their renal tumor, often contralateral, and yet they have these findings. I mean, these are all real patients, all real history and physicals. Well, it's also the, the CAT scan when you walk into an emergency room. Exactly. I mean, people have back pain, people have flank pain, people have, you know, history of kidney stones. Any, any, any trigger gets a CAT scan now when you walk in the ER. Not that it's correct, and it, most times it's not, but it's what happens, and then they show up in our office with this history. So not to belabor the point, but basically this patient was enrolled in our neoadjuvant exitinib trial and received three months of neoadjuvant exitinib. Exitinib is the new targeted agent from Pfizer, escalated to 10 milligrams BID. It was relatively well tolerated. Grade two hypertension and fatigue, hypothyroidism, and stomatitis. And these are the follow-up images. I trust these images are adequate for your use? Those, those, are, those are adequate, <laughs> and, that, and that definitely appears to be a much easier partial nephrectomy. Uh, you, could, you could even attempt that robotically. So you can see that the, the tumor has regressed dramatically, and plus also, in addition to shrinking in size, there's a central necrosis where the inside of the tumor is basically dead, and that's related to the anti-angiogenic effect of the medicine to cause the blood vessels to regress. And this patient underwent a, a partial nephrectomy with intraoperative ultrasound, and it turned out to be a T1B, or sorry, T1A, from in grade three. So it shrank the tumor dramatically. And this may be the wave of the future. I think neoadjuvant therapy, particularly with these new targeted agents, uh, may be the wave of the future to try and um, decrease the size of the primary tumor to either make surgery easier, make nephron sparing more feasible. Um, but obviously, all, the, all of this needs to be studied in the context of a clinical trial. Okay, I think that's very important. Just yeah, go ahead. Can I, can I just ask <laughs> a question to Dr. Sure. Mateen and, and Dr. Wood? What have you found 
uh, intraoperatively, do you find that the tissue planes are any different, especially robotically, <coughs> after targeted therapy? Or? I think that, you know, you can get this rind, uh, reactive rind uh, around it. Other than that, it's, you know, I'm, I'm not sure it's that much more difficult. Yeah, I haven't noticed any dramatic yeah. changes, I mean, it, it, which is actually very fortunate. You'd expect many times, like for instance, with testicular cancer patients after getting chemotherapy, there can be this tremendous reaction around what's left over because of the dying tumor and your body's immune system attacking it. And that was a concern here. Could this actually make the surgery harder? But that has not been our experience. Uh, and in many patients where it was either a borderline partial or partial was not possible, we were able to shrink the tumor using this drug uh, and, uh, and perform partial nephrectomy with good outcomes. I would just want to stress the importance that this is on a clinical trial basis and that this, was not, this would not be considered something that would be standard. And we've made point of that several times today of not giving TKIs with the, the hope of downsizing or downstaging a tumor. Although, I, I, you know, we see a lot of anecdotal cases in the literature, and I think that it tends to falsify kind of what people think of this. Mm -hmm. um, I know your, your experience so far with exitinib has been different, and, you know, when, when that's published, it, it can be uh, something that we evaluate further. But uh, at this point, this is only in the context of a clinical trial and would not have been standard of care therapy. Okay.